Here is a basic physics application of derivatives. The position of a particle is given by the function x of t equals t cubed over 3 minus 4t squared plus 12t. In which time interval or intervals does the particle have a positive velocity? So in order to solve this problem, it's important to understand how velocity and position are related. Velocity, or v of t, is just equal to x prime of t, or the rate of change of position. That is how velocity is defined. So, what we get at here, if we want v of t to be greater than zero, which it must be for it to be positive, this implies that we need x prime of t to be greater than zero. So what we need to do here is take the derivative of this function with respect to t and ensure that it is greater than zero. So we need to find the intervals where x prime of t is greater than zero. So the first step is always take the derivative. So let's do that. x prime of t will be 3t squared over 3 minus 8t plus 12. So this gives us, the 3's will cancel, we get t squared minus 8t plus 12. And we know that this, since this is x prime of t, which is v of t, this must be greater than 0. So, for a second step, we'll set up that inequality t squared minus 8t plus 12 must be greater than 0. So in order to find these intervals, it is necessary to find the zeros of this function. Because a zero, especially for a quadratic function, represents where it will go from positive to negative, or vice versa. So let's factor this out. We need two numbers whose sum is negative 8 and whose product is 12. Yeah, it'll be negative 6 and negative 2. So we get t minus 6 times t minus 2 is greater than 0. So if I draw a number line, this is t equals 0. Uh, this would be t equals 2. This would be t equals 6. And this approaches infinity. On this interval, our velocity will all have the same sign as it will on this interval. And it will also on this interval. So we need to find what our velocity is on each interval here. In order to see how the velocity behaves in each interval, it's very helpful to set up a chart such as this one. I have each part of my function here, t minus 2, t minus 6, and their product. And I want to know what the sign of each of these is on each interval. So the first interval I have includes 0, and it goes to 2. And I'm including 0 since our function is not actually 0 at 0 here. And it's only cut off because time is defined to be a positive or 0 value. We cannot have negative time. But I'm not including any of my zeros of my function because in the question, they are asking for when the particle has a positive value. They want to know when the velocity is greater than zero. So on the interval zero to two, I can just plug in a number. So since it can include zero, I might as well sub in zero here. So t minus two, if I plug in zero for t, I will get a negative value. I'll also get a negative value if I plug in 0 to this one. So their product, or the velocity, will be positive. So this is one interval that satisfies a positive velocity. For the next interval, I have to plug in a number between 2 and 6. I'll plug in 3. So this one will give me a positive value. This one will give me a negative value. So that gives me a negative velocity. Therefore, this interval, from 2 to 6 for time, will not be included in my answer. The last interval, I'll plug in anything on this interval. 
from 6 to approaching infinity. Let's plug in 100. 100 minus 2 will give me a positive value. 100 minus 6 will give me a positive value. Therefore, the product will give me a positive value. So, upon observation of this chart, on this interval, I'll get a positive velocity as well as on in this interval. Therefore, the particle has a positive velocity on the interval, including 0 to 2, not inclusive, because my function would be 0 at 2. Now, I'm going to skip the middle interval, and then I will go from 6 all the way approaching infinity. So what this is saying is it includes the interval from 0 inclusive to 2 and the interval from 6 to infinity. Now here's one for you to try. This problem asks us to find when the particle is at rest given that the position of a particle can be described by the function f of t equals t cubed over 3 minus 7 over 2 t squared plus 16. And here's the solution.